An audible assault of fun is with you now. If you're listening to us, wonderful. You've uh, you've checked out the Sports Key to Wrestling podcast available on Spotify and other apps. Hopefully, Apple learns to get on board soon. You can also watch this on demand on the Sports Key to Wrestling YouTube available everywhere. Maybe we're on your television. Or maybe you've stopped watching wrestling on television to watch us talk about wrestling on your television. Could you that imagine us on like a 65-inch screen tv in somebody's living room just our smiling faces all <laughs> over somebody's big ass you know 4k television yeah man totally <laughs> dude it, it's so much to get into today we are talking to conrad thompson the pod father will be on the show a full interview with him about his new podcast yes he has another one this time with Jeff Jarrett, we talk about that unique relationship, how he balances everything. So if you're into wrestling podcasting, we got the guy you already know. We're going to chat him up. We're going to chat him up. Then he's going to roll tide. Uh, we're going to go into all those different things. Uh, AEW has just made a massive, massive media move while their media partner is making another massive media move. We'll get into those stories. Uh, and uh, this, this situation, Bailey Eva is getting a little, Eva Marie is getting a little bit more tense. It's going somewhere. And we... We have we have a comment from Bailey on that that we'll we'll be able to touch on. So much to get into. It is the inside cradle from Sports Kuda. Watch out! Watch out! Watch out! Watch out! Oh man, our animated graphics are so good. Kudos to our graphics team for making that for people watching the video version of that. I am Kev Calm. That is Rick Uccino. Uh, he is in Ohio, which is for lovers. I'm in uh, Chicago, which is for wrestling fans. Sorry, just just oh oh okay. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I, I, have, I have a whole uh, conversation with John Moxley about how Cincinnati is a very underserved media market, by the way. I am totally <laughs> on board with him. We are well underserved down here in the Queen City, and we deserve that. <laughs> uh, the Queen City. When Dayton's too busy, you go to Cincinnati. <laughs> See, we're, we're pretty ridiculous. Yes, we will talk about wrestling. Let's get into it. All Elite Wrestling, they are uh, they they had their renewal at the beginning of 2020, which, uh, you know, just a few months into their initial deal, they got right. renewed with TNT, which is under the Warner Media banner. Uh, and that was seen as a big move. They had huge uh, debut numbers. They've kind of settled in. They had the ratings battle with WWE and NXT. Some people see that they won that. NXT is still on the air and does a very, I, I think, a very good number. Uh, other people would say otherwise, but uh, Warner Media doubling down yet again on AEW, announcing this week Tony Khan making the announcement official on Busted Open with through Series XM that they will expand. They will move Dynamite on Wednesday nights over to TBS, which will put them yeah. in more homes. TBS is a, a greater uh, a, a reach on cable television, and then they will add another weekly television show for one hour on Friday nights at 9 p.m. Central, 10 p.m. Eastern, called Rampage. Dynamite still staying two hours. Tony Khan revealing uh, that they were approached about expanding the show to three hours. Weekly, yeah. which, uh, some people opposed that idea. Uh, right. So now they will have four weekly uh, television shows, two on uh, YouTube and then uh, two on traditional uh, cable. But this really, I mean, Tony Khan has said it. Their biggest revenue source is television right now. And this is a huge reach for them. What do you think? Well, I love the fact that he was offered a third hour for Dynamite and was like, no. Don't want to do it. Don't want to expand dynamite out uh, another hour. Let's push it off. Let's do it as its own separate thing. They've been talking about a second televised show for a while now, or at least that's been the rumor. So now we're getting it uh, with Rampage, uh, which, by the way, I can't say that name and not think of the uh, episode from Archer where he's just running around screaming Rampage <laughs> on the wall, all, like 18 million times. Uh, so, you know, that's always going to be in my head now. So I appreciate Tony Khan for that. But I love that because one of the biggest knocks on raw is the fact that it's three hours long and how difficult it is to book a three hour show and make it good and consistent all the way through and keep and it's difficult. Going. It's difficult for WWE to pull back from that because they make so much more extra money in that extra hour of cable. Right? Exactly. So if let's just say WWE was able to do something like what AEW is doing, where they got offered that third hour. Okay. Here, here's your third hour of programming. Who says it has to be at 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. on Wednesday nights? Same with that third hour of Raw. Who says it has to be 10 p.m. to 11 a.m. on on Monday nights? Why can't they just treat it? I don't know. Maybe it's a contractual thing. I'm talking out of my butt here. But if they could find a way to take that third hour 
and still just say, hey, it's another hour of programming on USA that we owe you. Why don't they try moving it to another night, creating a, a, another show, something that people would want to see? Maybe that that all women's brand that we have been that we've talked about before on this program that I think people would would want to see. Um, and people have pitched. Mickey James said it after she got released. She has been pitching for an all women's brand for a while now and kind of open up something uh, for some of these other stars like Nikki Cross that we finally saw for the first time in months. Uh, on Monday, and you literally had, had nerds like me on social media who were ecstatic to see her, and all she was was a lumberjack, Kev. She, or excuse me, a lumber Jill. She was a lumber Jill. She chucked uh, John Morrison back in the ring, and then she just went freaking nuts. And I'm like, when she did it, when she did it, she was so happy for herself. I know. She's I'm like, like, I put it back in the ring. <laughs> of course, that's the most action she's gotten on Raw. Oh, you got to yeah. maximize your minutes, dude. Yeah, you know that. Absolutely. You got to maximize your minutes. She did the and one thing, and she made it big. Exactly. And that's where, you know, Billy Kay was thriving on SmackDown before, you know, they inconceivably released her. But, you know, all that it was all that was that's all it took for us to go. God, we miss Nikki Cross. Why the hell hasn't she been on television? So I'm still pushing for, you know, please do an all women's brand. Maybe you could take that third hour from Raw, move it over to Thursdays at eight mm -hmm. o'clock and just have a one hour uh, women's show where you can tape segments before uh, Raw. SmackDown and NXT involve talents from all three shows and then just kind of edit it together and throw it up there on Thursday night. It's at nights at eight o'clock. I, I don't yeah. oppose that idea. If you are someone that enjoys just bemoaning Monday Night Raw and complaining about wrestling, or at least more critiquing it under a greater scope, please check out Legion of Raw available on our YouTube channel from Sports Key to Wrestling with Vince Russo every single Monday night. Him and Dr. Chris Featherstone have been roasting Raw recent weeks. I don't think it's nearly as bad, but it's not my opinion. It's their opinion, and you can yep. hear them sound off and join the conversation there as well. Uh, they brought up uh, a, 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 an interesting situation that could possibly happen with Nikki Cross, and uh, you should definitely check out the uh, most recent episode here. Uh, it's interesting we talk about back, uh, bring it back here to the core of the segment is AEW, how this is just another sign of their growth, how strong they are. They're announcing touring again. Uh, they're going to go full force. Uh, another sign of competition. You know, aid, uh, NXT hasn't had a huge bump uh, on on Tuesdays. They've kind of settled into into a lane there as well. I think they did. Uh, and uh, AEW though has also they've come down a little bit, not as tight as they once were. Yeah, I think NXT did uh, about seven hundred thousand or so mm -hmm. uh, this week. Well, as of this recording, we haven't seen the numbers for uh, for Wednesday's Dynamite. But the thing is, is both shows have been really, really good. That's that's the important part. Is both yeah. NXT and both AEW have been putting on fantastic shows. Last night's uh, Dynamite was incredibly fun. Uh, John Moxley and Eddie Kingston are just they're just gold. Uh, they're they're absolute gold and a, and a joy to watch. I mean, stealing the Young Bucks shoes at the end of the night that was uh, that was pretty rock solid. Um, and you know splitting up both shows it doesn't I, I don't care how many people watch because there's so many different ways that you can you can watch things now people watch on youtube they get wwe gets millions of hits and millions of views every week on youtube every time like people that. say the raw rating is down i say how many people watch clips on youtube and no and then suddenly everyone's like oh yeah okay yeah yeah, yeah. you're right that counts they make yeah. money off of that all right. Oh, you don't see. Oh, you don't see it in a in a like our dirt sheet world, right? Sometimes because right. we don't track those numbers the same way. Look, WWE isn't making fist loads of cash. Like their their whole collection isn't oh. worth billions, literally billions of dollars to yep. to Peacock for no reason. All right, that they are still very valuable. They still have tons of eyes on the product, just not traditional cable views shall we say but both shows are doing really really well uh and i love the fact that they have split because now i can actually you know keep and pay close attention to both products and i'm 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 loving it i'm enjoying the split so far uh coming up in the show we will uh cover here the hell in a cell move an aggressive move by wwe considering everything going on with the pandemic live events where the money in the bank show will be held this year yeah. and are we getting kofi mania too we will cover your zombie outrage that came from Backlash, the pay-per-view this past weekend from WWE. Uh, but let's get into this. The, we, we talked a little bit about NXT. Uh, there has been a, a clearing of sorts. They've reduced yeah. their roster to some degree. Some uh, releases were uh, controversial. Other ones were surprising. What do you think here? Well, obviously, the big one is uh, Drake Wurtz or uh, Drake Wurst, uh, whichever one you want to call him. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, for obviously his stuff that's uh, been going on, Fightful uh, and Sean Rossap uh, for Fightful Select have been uh, all over this. Just his political views and his 
conspiracy theory stuff, kind of making it a bit of a toxic work environment uh, mm -hmm. for uh, those backstage at NXT. NXT the reports where there were some people just uncomfortable being around him. So his release, uh, not shocking. And uh, SI's uh, Justin Barrasso is able to uh, confirm that his release has not been quote unquote due to budgetary concerns, uh, but uh, more his uh, performance and what he's been doing backstage. That one doesn't make a, a isn't too big of a shock. Yeah, and the case with him got it got progressively worse as he got yeah. covered right yeah absolutely it's just i mean that he was on like a local government show like a, a, a local government round table down in uh florida uh screaming about how masks like make make it susceptible for kids to be picked up by sex traffickers or something mm -hmm. like that because there's some kind of a correlation there i guess and he's sitting there wearing an nxt branding shirt while he's on this you know live uh zoom call or whatever it is so i know that that kind of irks some people backstage according to reports so uh this is something that's been building up and has been coming but uh a lot of the other releases were a, a bit of a shock uh i mean we talk about alexander wolf this is a guy who was what literally like one of the main figures on nxt on Tuesday and then Wednesday, uh, he's out. He did tweet out that his contract is up and that might have uh, a little bit something to do with him. But, mm. uh, you know, some of the others, a little, the, the one that surprises me is, uh, is Jasmine Duke. Um, cause man, that just, that just signifies that WWE never really went all in on the MMA for horsewomen as, as many of us, you know, nerds did as many of the fans did. Cause we saw those four and we saw we're sitting here. How, how long has a conversation been going on? It's like, we got to have the MMA four horsewomen against the four horsewomen of WWE at some ever point. since Ronda got signed. Right. Yeah. And now yeah, it's just, I mean, it, like, and it's been that it's been that I, I want to call it a dream match, but it's just been a match that everyone like kind of like fantasy books that it's going to happen at some point, the same way people were talking about Roman and the rock. And it's just a matter of when you can do it at this point. Right. And people say, when you hear so many people say they're going to do this, then they, then they kind of have to, uh, but WWE, they did tease that one though. They haven't teased rock and Roman. We've seen them interact, but they haven't teased a match between them. Everyone just wants the match, right? With this one, this was teased once. They they filmed some stuff to tease the four MMA women that came into wrestling against the four horsewomen of NXT, Sasha, Bailey, Becky, and Charlotte. Right. Against Ronda and her girls, which included Marina Shafir. And I believe, who was the fourth I'm thinking of there? Shayna Baszler. Shayna Baszler. Yeah, obviously. Oh, yeah, yeah. God, over my head there, right? <laughs> and so um, it's kind of interesting that they... they said like all right this isn't something we have to invest in and maybe that was something that kept uh you know jessamine duke who has not been on television a long time kind of on oh. the roster for this long yeah and it, it it's just even if we didn't get four horsewomen versus four horsewomen the fact that you had an opportunity there and it looked like they were teasing it that they at least teased it one time that they were going to bring shafir and duke up to be with Shayna baszler and at least have them be a trio on raw i mean that was back when they were doing raw underground we saw them for an episode or two the fact that they teased that and then decided, nah, we're not going to do that. We're going to go in another direction with Shayna Baszler, which took her into this team with not the fact that they saw more value in putting her with Nia Jax and Reginald than putting her with uh, Shafir and Duke tells you that they they really didn't see any value, I guess, in 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 those women. I I do. I've been wanting to see them take a, a more serious, more killer side to uh, to Shayna Baszler, like when they first brought her up. And I thought it would have been great to put those two ladies with her and to see what they could do as a trio and run roughshod uh, on Monday Night Raw until uh, Becky was ready to circle the wagons and come back and 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 take out Shayna Baszler uh, and maybe get, you know, Bailey and Sasha and Charlotte all on board. You know, that, that could have been an, a long, natural build to where you guys could get that matchup. Of course, Ronda Rousey not being with the company for the last two years. And now she's about ready to have a baby. Congratulations to her. So she's going to be out for, for quite some time. And then Becky is quite some be, time who knows when Becky's going to be back. Hell, we may not ever get that Becky Lynch, Ronda Rousey match that we've been, you know, clamoring for. That's at least two years away now, if it's ever going to happen. So, cause God knows what happens over that course of time. So, um, you know, you never, you, you always say you want things and you say, well, well, we'll get to it eventually. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, so, WWE is getting to something that we've been expecting for a long time. We've been reporting this Monday through Friday. Jose G and I uh, do live streams around 5 p.m., 6 p.m., uh, 5 p.m. East, 5 p.m. Uh, Central, 6 p.m. Eastern. I can speak professionally. <laughs> and we do the top story of the day. We just do two stories in 20 minutes. We kind of dig into them. Uh, and so one story we've been covering has been, it's just been developing more and more is this talk of WWE getting back on the road. AEW obviously announced their dates. 
We knew AEW was announcing dates for quite some time. Uh, Jim Ross put it out there that they were doing it. I saw, I spoke to him about it. You guys can download that interview, by the way. It's in our podcast feed. Go ahead and stream that as well. Uh, the full audio and only interview is up there. We don't have the video of it up just yet. Uh, we'll be talking to Conrad Thompson from his podcast family here in this episode uh, as well. So, I mean, they put it out there. So AEW kind of forces their hand. And then we heard that WWE was itching to do it. Now we hear reports that Fox Network wants SmackDown back on the road in front of real crowds of course as do. soon as they can get out there safely. And then we get this news within the last hour, which is what? Yeah, so uh, SI, Sports Illustrated's Justin Barrasso, uh, you know, said he confirmed, uh, you know, Sean Rossap's report uh, about uh, Drake Wirtz. But uh, he has also confirmed uh, that Hell in a Cell is going to be in June when they announced that. Uh, well, excuse me. We know Hell in a Cell is going to be in June. Excuse me. They announced that Hell in a Cell is going to be in June. He has confirmed that Money in the Bank is going to be in July. And that was the big thing when they did that massive like uh, graphic and the the video. And they said, you know, Hell is going to be it's going to be hot as hell this summer. I think that was the tagline. It was really, really cute. And everybody's like, OK, hold on. Time out. At least I know I did. I was like, didn't they already announce that Money in the Bank was going to be the next pay-per-view? Because I remember talking to Bailey about that, you know, last week, which is also an interview, by the way, you can uh, listen to on the uh, Sports Kid Wrestling YouTube channel. Um, you know, I talked to her about Money in the Bank like it was coming up in June. And now all of a sudden you're making me out to be a liar, WWE. It's not in June anymore. Now they're going to bump it back to uh, Money in the Bank. But as Justin Barrasso with S SI reports, it's for a good reason. It's because they feel that Hell in a Cell will play better inside the Thunderdome and that Money in the Bank would be better in front of fans, in front of a crowd in... I Texas. don't disagree with that at all. I don't disagree either. In front of a crowd in Texas, nonetheless. So it looks like uh, Money in the Bank is going to be in July in Texas. That is all uh, we have right now. Uh, the details on that from Justin Barrasso. Uh, and more importantly, that uh, SummerSlam will also be in front of a live crowd in August in Nevada. So it looks Las like Vegas? it's going to be Viva Las Vegas for SummerSlam. Do they, do they play the August. Raiders Stadium with that then? I don't know about a venue yet. That would be that would be interesting. I would be down for that. Uh, I, I would assume they go the, the arena route, you know? But, I mean, now well, we have to talk specs. Many How many people are you into this thing? Are we doing full house here? Oh, God, yeah. By August? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got you got health restrictions that are being lifted everywhere within the next couple of weeks. Uh, I know in Ohio, uh, you know, with our governor, who's been, like, one of the most stringent, like, no, we're not going to do this. We're going to wait. We're going to see how things play out. He's lifting everything in June 2nd. So I think we're going to be, you guys got that million dollar lottery. If you get vaccinated, you get, Oh yeah. You'll know if I win by the way, cause I won't be here next week. Uh, <laughs> what? What? Did I say that out loud? <laughs> You're going to quit the show. Cause you won the lottery. Come no, on. I'll be out celebrating. I'll be in Vegas. early. <laughs> I'm going to go uh, lose so it all. That's, that's game where things are. I, I mean, every day we're talking to fans, more people are excited about being back. This is great news. This is just good news. Uh, WWE yeah. going to do some big shows. I wonder if they're going to do the Thunderdome in between those pay per views. I would assume that they're going to they're only going to do these pay per views as live shows, right? Uh, I, I think the the talk is from what I've heard, from what I've read, and I I haven't had a chance to read uh, Justin's full story here on SI yet because literally this came out like right before we started recording this. Mm -hmm. uh, but as soon as they get into Money in the Bank, it's it's all systems go. It's Money in the that, Bank that, and, that and lines up with what uh, company officials said too. Now, mind yeah. you, it's a fluid situation could change. And then they're like, no, we don't want to do this. Someone got COVID exposed. But, um, you know, they got tighter about their restrictions in the summer uh, when they when they saw that testing was productive and they could catch things. Yep. They've had some outbreaks and they were able to squash them. You know, some people in the roster got it. You know, some people got their vaccinations when they're supposed to. Uh, and I guess not everyone has to say whether or not they're vaccinated, too. So that's another situation. But right. um, it's it's an interesting scenario here uh, of how WWE is going to do this. Uh, Nick Khan, he said the week of WrestleMania uh, to Variety that when we go back out on the road, we're back out on the road. This isn't yeah. going to be something where we pull back and we and we go back to the Thunderdome like we have to after WrestleMania. WrestleMania is a different story. Um, it'd be interesting if by the middle of the summer, right when everything's going up, that they do that. Uh, but I don't think every part of the country is going to be able to have them. You know, there's going to be different areas where they're more receptive to it, right? I, I would think at least at first. But again, I mean, you got... You got states like Ohio. I mean, New York is they have enough up. regions. They, yeah. they have enough, there's they enough. Have, there's enough area where they could go and do this. Yeah, you know? I, I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of restrictions. And it's not like they're going to be going like full blown. Here's our here. We're going back on house shows and we're going to be in Paducah, Kentucky no, on Saturday. This, and, it looks like we're only getting TV and pay-per-view, which is the majority of the I, I think it's anyway. Yeah, 
NXT is going to be from Full Sail or, you know, wherever they're doing it, uh, the PC Full Sail, whichever combo they want to do there. Raw and SmackDown are going to be on the road. And then, yeah, uh, your pay-per-views are going to be on the road. So they're probably setting up dates uh, as we speak. Uh, once again, I'll throw out Cincinnati as a uh, possibility. Please come to the Heritage Bank Center whenever you can. ASAP. I love going to live events. But, uh, you know, again, I'm really excited that they decided to make this switch. They could have just done extreme rules here than move, rather than moving Hell in a Cell up, but I think it does create an interesting possibility on SmackDown, which is something we'll talk about here in a minute. Um, but the fact that they're good, they're aiming to do Money in the Bank in front of fans, I love. Because to me, the cinematic Money in the Bank last year, the dual match, had all the makings of being really, really good, and it, it just fell flat for me. I was on the minority of one of the people who just really didn't enjoy last year's I Money in the Bank. I loved it. Match. I'm sure I you loved did. it. Yeah, I, I loved wanted it. something a little bit more serious. It was just too slapstick for me. They like it, it was I, just I enjoyed that they turned it into it's a mad mad world. I liked it. I thought it was fun, man. <sighs> I mean, yeah, it was fun at times, but I mean, I still remember them making Dana Brooke like like look like a complete idiot uh in that matchup with her taking the briefcase out of the the office and then losing her way, like couldn't even find her way uh to the roof. I mean, Baron Corbin committed double murder and was just able to to basically walk away and then, you know, we got two guys who ended up being reincarnated and yeah, I don't know. It was just it was just a really really weird thing. I was I think it was I was expecting something different and it just kind of fell flat for me. Um I'm I'm excited to see separate money in the bank ladder matches getting back to the way things were and in front of a crowd and seeing some uh, some big live pops maybe some big returns too I mean what we're it is May 20th we're not that far away from the middle of July time is ticking down my friend maybe we get that uh, maybe we get that big return that I'm uh, I'm hoping for come you're uh, hoping for a Becky Lynch return oh absolutely at some point I think she was I think she's a natural pick she'd be a real kick in the ass for their programming you know, um, well right now, yeah. Uh, definitely the women, the women's division needs specifically on Raw. They need something fresh. Rhea Ripley's only been there a while. It doesn't. It doesn't feel particularly. Well, fresh I mean, the they've they they we've seen her and Asuka five times in five weeks. Yeah, so and, they need and she's different. not wrestling her. She's wrestling Charlotte, and it feels like that's all she's done on the main roster is wrestle Charlotte and Asuka. And it's like, guys, just because they're in a feud together doesn't mean they always have to wrestle one another. You have other people on the roster an entire tag team division as a matter of fact that you just keep having backstage segments with but you're not putting them in the ring give us mandy rose versus uh rhea ripley give us lana uh versus asuka i don't care i, I want to see more women's matches again which is why i'm pushing for that all women's brand so speaking of money at raw this week we saw kofi kingston yeah, uh, featured and not only a match with randy orton which is pretty prominent he was able to steal the win there with help with uh, xavier woods at ringside got himself in the main event in the open challenge to bobby lashley which we were told that the end was not a not a title match it was just a, an open challenge not for the right. title for the wwe championship interesting match drew mcintyre who's still uh, in the uh in the side a thorn in the side of bobby lashley uh and coming out of wrestlemania he got involved and helped kofi pick up the win does this get kofi in the main event is kofi going to be involved in hell in a cell what are we going to do here we're going to get a multi-man situation inside the hell and in, inside the cell i'm okay with that if they want to do the one of the big cell matches they want to do a multi-man Hell in a Cell match, shake it up a little bit. Yeah, they got to do something here because they're running out of dudes. They're yeah. already running out of dudes that they have built up to face uh, Bobby Lashley. I mean, you look at the the Raw roster. I mean, there's there's only really a number of of different directions that they can go. It has been Drew McIntyre for a while now. AJ Styles is in a tag team. Randy Orton is in a tag team. Brock uh, Lesnar is MIA. You just had Braun Strowman uh, lose uh, definitively. I mean, who else do we got? And you and Drew, I don't think is not over. It's just you've you've had him in the title picture for so long now, just exactly. Well over just over a year now. Yeah, since Royal Rumble 2020, he has been in the world title picture. He's either been chasing it or he's had it. Um, so, I mean, I would like to see him do other things. Now, it doesn't mean you don't have the talent. I mean, you got guys uh, that that could. I mean, Sheamus is a United States champion right now, but you got guys like Ricochet and Ali uh, who could be credible guys to to move up. You have uh, Jeff Hardy, who you're doing absolutely nothing with. You have Jinder Mahal, who's a former WWE champion. So, I mean, if you're going to go, you know, that route of, well, we got to figure out somebody who's credible right now that we could throw in there because we don't have anybody who's strung together enough wins to, to move up the roster. 
Kofi Kingston is not a bad choice at all. This is a guy who is a former WWE champion who the fans love. You need a baby face going up against Bobby Lashley. And we've seen what happens if you, if you just give him a crumb, right? Just give him a little bit of hope, get the audience attached. He's a guy that the fan base will attach to and run wild with. We have seen it before. And especially the way that his WWE title run ended the last time people have been clamoring for him to get another opportunity at that championship. So yeah, what do you do? You have Kofi Kingston beat Randy Orton and Bobby Lashley in the same night. Distractions be damned. He's automatically in the title picture immediately. And I have no problem with that because guess what? The new day probably need to be out of the tag team title picture for a while. If I'm honest. So it's let's, okay. Let's and, and Kofi. Xavier Woods is pretty is a very good supporting character. I'm not opposed to this concept. No. Not opposed. I'm not saying he's going to uh, win the WWE championship. Something uh, you are opposed. I think a lot of wrestling fans are opposed to. Uh, and uh, I was opposed to the way fans reacted to this. WWE backlash. Yeah. WrestleMania backlash. I thought was a great show. We did a Fantastic. post show. Ton Love of people it. watched it. I thought it was a great, great show. I thought it had great, great matches on it. I thought Cesaro had a match that made him a main event player, even though he didn't win. He's a main event guy now. He solidified himself and hung in there with Roman Reigns. I thought Bailey and Bianca had a very fun, creative match. I thought we had one of the best big man matches we've ever seen in the WWE. We're talking to a big man next week. We, we, have, we have something to cook him with one of the, uh, a very big man in professional yes, wrestling. large, huge. We'll explain that. Well, we'll drop that little tease there and uh, get back to it toward the end. Of the show. Yeah. So we we have all these great matches on the show, but all everyone wanted to talk about, they didn't want to talk about what they tune in for. You tune in for great wrestling and you got it. No, no don't tell cool. me I can't bitch about zombies. <laughs> don't tell me I can't bitch about a marketing tie-in that becomes a match, okay? Don't tell me I can't bitch. I need to bitch. I need to out-bitch someone else who's also bitching. I need to out-troll someone who's also trolling. Like, I get having fun and making fun of something and memes and stuff like that. I botch a mania. I've met Matthew, incredibly funny, funny guy, all right? that's that's I enjoy that, all right? Uh, Sa uh, Salamander, I'm probably saying the name wrong. I've, I've seen his stuff, right? People that are very critical and don't like WWE, but can do it in a way that is creative and constructive and articulate, right? This was basement level, just WWE sucks. This sucks. Why are we watching this? This is the death of WWE. This is this is so stupid. But people, people dressed up like zombies. Show. You stop it. You watch The Undertaker. You watch The Undertaker. You love The Undertaker, and this is too much for you. you it was bad. Man Listen, put himself bad, over God. No, no, here's the problem, Rick. I'm so mad about this. I've been mad about this all, all fucking week. I don't care. I'm swearing now, all right? I've been mad about this all fucking week, and the reason why is Cesaro should have been the star of the night. He didn't win, and he should have been the star of the night. And you are supposed to support him, and you're supposed to be the internet people that are like, oh, our guy, this is our guy. But when you can all suddenly start licking your chops to go at something, and then it becomes trolling, trolling, trolling. And it isn't about the company making a bad match. It's about you getting as much attention as you possibly can while you chase clout, all right, to, to try and seem like you're the guy who took WWE down. Me and my 15 Twitter followers took WWE down. Get over yourself. It was a dumb match. The rest of the show was awesome. That's it. But we want to be mad about zombies. Poor Miz uh, dislocated his ACL in this match. Going to be on the shelf for nine months. All right. Yeah, it was that, bad. It was bad. I'm fine with it being bad. All right? right. Look, here's the thing. So would I have booked zombies on this show? No, I would not. Um, it wasn't great. It was kind of a cluster. I get what they were going for. You know, they wanted Miz and 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 Priest to be on the outside. Like, oh, we're fighting off the horde, guys. You know, we got that mm -hmm. that Walking Dead level stuff. That's what they wanted. Mm -hmm. Kind of came off as a as a as a joggled mess. That's that's fine. But yeah, the reaction to it was insane. Like, just people losing their minds. And the thing that made <laughs> that made me nuts is people were treating them like they were real zombies. Like they're sitting there saying, oh, well, why aren't they getting in the ring? Why are they abiding to, to the rules of the match if they're zombies? Like, guys, can we stop treating like them like they're actually 
brain hungry undead carcasses because they're not they're dudes in makeup for a promotion for a movie tie-in that's what they are they're actors they're actors who are portraying as lumberjacks that's it that's all they were and yeah they were yes mm-hmm. did they form the miz at the end yeah they did but again actors portraying a role they weren't actual zombies it made me nuts that people were going insane over the fact that these zombies weren't actually eating people or getting in the ring to disturb the match or you know, committing murder or whatever. And I'm just sitting here and I'm going, guy, I I even sent out a tweet. I'm like, guys, they're not real zombies. They're just lumberjacks. This is a movie tie-in. This Mm -hmm. is the most outrage Mm -hmm. I've seen over lumberjacks ever in the history of mankind, because otherwise you don't give a damn who the lumberjacks are. And I actually had people whose opinions that uh, I respect and I I'm fine with it calling me saying I'm out. I'm truly out on an Island right now. And that, you know, this is an embarrassment to the WWE and this, that, and the other thing. And I'm like, is it really, is it really, does anybody really remember the attitude era and some of the stuff that they did? Mm-hmm. Like Katie Vick, anybody remember mm-hmm. that? But this, this, a promotional. Wait, 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 I want to, you want to do the trolling thing? Let's troll one <laughs> troll. Let's troll. Let's, let's do wrestling. troll Cause wrestling trolling is more important now than actually liking wrestling. Because yeah, you, you claim right. that you want pure, you want pure athleticism, you want storytelling, bell to bell, and you got Cesaro and Roman Reigns doing that, and telling a brilliant story about him uh, being able to fight all these different things, and then finally just getting caught and it's over with, right? Sure. But that's stake, right? What you want to do is yell at them for selling you a, a sugary soda, you know? And so you can't have it both ways. You can't. Be mad at them for not saying they don't have this when they give it to you and you take it for granted and you take it for granted and you take what the producers did in that match for granted and you take what Roman Reigns is doing for granted and you take what Bianca Bel- Belair is doing for granted, what Bailey is doing, what the three big men who had uh, people thought was a soft build, but Bobby Lashley and Braun Strowman and Drew McIntyre went out there. Braun Strowman nearly broke his neck doing a tope. That's a 300 pound man. But you forget about it because it's more important for me to get over on my Instagram feed with memes. Get over yourself. Here's the other thing. Get over it. Here's the other thing. You talk about all of those matches, right? All of those great matches. Cesaro and and Roman Reigns, the the WWE Triple Threat. This show was nearly better than WrestleMania. Yeah, all those matches were fantastic. If, If Damian Priest... And the Miz had a normal everyday lumberjack match where it was care. Otis he and Abel and this, that, and the, that would have been the most forgotten about match. Nobody would be talking about Miz. No one would be talking about Damian Priest. Nobody would be talking about that match at all, which is why they did the movie tie in with that match, which is they wanted to do something fun. They wanted to do something fun out of the box and spice up a match that we have seen four or five times already since January. This was the blow off match to the feud. So they tried something different. It didn't stick. It didn't work. That's it. We don't need articles from Forbes or whoever the hell it was saying that this was a dark day for WWE. And it's like this. Guys, my God, they tried something. They tried something. It didn't work. Also, have, you know this, too. They did this on Halloween Havoc. If they did this on one of their theme shows. They have Halloween Havoc in October, right? If they did this there, no one would complain. It'd be like, oh, yeah, it's Halloween Havoc. Have zombies. Sure. All right. Also, this may sound petty, but it's true. If they did this in AEW, it wouldn't be an issue. It wouldn't be an issue at all. <sighs> they would just be like, yeah, this is fun and silly. For if they the... did this in like one of those like already out there independent organizations, Jakar used to do fun, wild shit like this all the time, right? Yeah, if people it, would think it was fun market. and irreverent and different. For for the but Mark WWE fans, does it, would, then it's, they're the corporate bad guys. They're yeah, I, bad guys the, the for the Mark fans guys. out there, yes, I think you would be right on that. But there are there are people who are objectively like, hey, they'll criticize this kind of crap for for both companies, and I can appreciate that. So it's it's not an even split, but this was universally panned pretty much across the board. Like I said, I'm not liking the match, but I'm not going to sit here and decide to pull my hair out over some lumberjacks. I'm, sorry, I'm not I'm pulling not. my hair out over it. I'm pulling my hair out over the astounding loud levels of hypocritical bullshit that we get from people. And people say, oh, you shouldn't go off in wrestling fans. I will. Wrestling is so much better than it needs to be in a pandemic right now. It, it's so much better than, than people give it. 
It, the, there are so many people across the board, wherever it's televised, that are kicking their ass, that are doing some very, very great things, that are adapting to all this. And I don't just say the people in the ring. I'm saying the production crews and all those different things to get through this. And now we're on the other side of it. But don't stop me from bitching. <laughs> the number one thing in wrestling isn't wrestling anymore. It's it's watching to bitch about it to other wrestling fans. It's the number one thing to hate and and and, and the number one loud emotion in, in wrestling is to hate WWE for being WWE. Right. And um and it's it's not like WWE does themselves a lot of favors because Raw has been pretty subpar for for a while now. But, but SmackDown's been great. But SmackDown's hating been great. something and it has been great. The if you hate louder it. than you love, then did you actually love it at all? Right. That's and all I got to say. How do you think Raw gets so many views on YouTube? Is because people would rather watch the clips to see what happened and follow what's going on than, than watch a full three hour show because Raw is just not up to par right now. And that's fine. And it's getting better. I think mm -hmm. the last few shows have been better than what we've been but getting. Who cares? NXT and SmackDown are great. What's the difference? And, and the pay per views are, are effing amazing. The pay per views have been great. There was little to no expectations heading into. Um, you, you, you want you want to hear something That's controversial? And it was awesome. I'll, I'll say something controversial. I don't think WWE's had a thumbs down bad pay per view since June of last year. I can't remember a bad one. To extreme be rules, honest. the last extreme rules with the swamp match and stuff. I love like, the swamp fight though. All right, so you're in the, in the minority, minority on that one, right? I know so, I'm in so, the Bray so Wyatt. Here's the thing: the the whole all that, you know. And we were still we were still very early in the pandemic then. Yeah, you know, how they were filming everything and all that different stuff, right? So. The whole thing, no, uh, like, yeah, I come on, get over it. When it's good, it's good. And if right. good outweighs bad, if great outweighs bad, why are we putting so much attention on it? Because it's not about that. You don't want to build anything up. You just want to see something burn. That's it. People just love to complain on social media, and that's what it is. So I, I literally, and I used to be one of those guys. Unless I'm talking about the Reds or the Bengals, I try to stay as positive as. Oh, sports possible. fans is the same thing, right? They are. They are, but you know, when you're a team like the Reds and you're getting crushed, last time I checked, <laughs> ten nothing because you put no money into the team in the uh, in the off season, you deserve to get shat on a little bit. All right, and you're gonna tick me off, but I unless I'm talking about the Reds or the Bengals, WWE and AEW have been my my escape. Uh, from reality. And I think they have done a damn good job. And I tend to focus a lot on the positives. Now, there will be some negatives from time to time where I, I just can't keep my mouth shut on it, but I will attack it from a uh, um, constructive criticism standpoint and not just shit all over it and say WWE is the worst thing ever and these guys suck and this is why I watch AEW, man. Oh, you want to go it. there? No, I want to go there. <laughs> I'll go there. What? Maybe this one gets clipped up for Twitter. Maybe this one gets clipped up for Twitter, oh, okay? Here we go. Why don't you retweet this? Why don't you retweet this to all the people that just want to stir that shit? And they don't clean the spoon off. They lick it off because they love it, right? Because you love to get in the shit. Here we go. Take this bite size in. <sighs> Haven't we had our own little zombie incident over in Jacksonville this past few months ago? This little uh, pay-per-view main event that you paid 50 bucks for a pop and you came and all you got was a bunch of, uh, you, you, got, you got a great match. You got two guys in there pouring their hearts out, right? Yep. And Kenny Omega and John Moxley busting their ass Cincinnati zone, right? Going for broke. And there's a production snafu and how the match is produced, not the actual guys performing in the ring, but the, the production of it. And the exploding barbed wire death match was a poof death match. Okay. That's what it was. A poof. All right. It was a, 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 a certain expulsion of air from a part of the body. Think about it. All right. So that's what it was. But let's not, you know, AEW, we can't say that. We can't no, because I'm I'm elite now. So I can't say that. And if I'm elite, I can't. I mean, I can say I was disappointed. I was I was let down. I was disappointed. What but if we can all get our production? digital pitchforks and go down to Stanford and sit in a parking lot and yell at a tower of a billionaire company that has been at the top of an industry for decades, then maybe we can change the world. Or I could piss someone off in a state that I'm never going to meet. Get over just yourself. Get, people just get way too fired up about things. Get over yourself. I, and I'm guilty of it from time to time. I've been guilty. I, I still get mad when I think about Goldberg pinning Bray Wyatt. I do. All right. I'm there. I've been there. I've been there. Oh, I was, that guy. I, was, uh, I was covering the business that day. Yeah, we, were we've all been off. there, guys. But pick your battles. 
pick your battles. <laughs> do I think do I think a couple of guys in zombie makeup for a, a, a movie promotion and a throwaway lumberjack match is something to 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 bitch, piss, moan, and groan and 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 quit the business over? No, I'm sorry, I don't. It just didn't bother me that much. Did I like it? No, but it didn't bother me that much. No one cared when you had uh what Ch- you, you had Chucky e. T and Trent. Trent and AEW dressed up like Rick and Morty out there. No one, no one threw a fit when they did that, right? It's cross promotional stuff. AEW yeah. does this all the time with Shaq and and all and, and Mike Tyson, and it, it's to draw people in. Now, this wasn't to draw people in. This was an advertisement for a yeah. movie. All right, get Who's it in there. Done that. Remember when AEW brought in uh, Jay and Silent Bob uh, for yeah. whatever the hell it was that they were promoting? I think uh, Jay yeah, and they, they had Kevin. No, it was Jay and Silent Bob. Yeah, came out. Jason Mewes and Kevin Smith. Yeah, yeah. When the when the reboot movie came out. Um, yeah. It's no different, man. It's no different. They did this as a movie advertisement. It didn't really bother me all that much. I have a more of a problem with the fact that we have a zombie movie coming out in May as opposed to October when, you know, that kind of stuff should be coming out. But that's just that's a stream churn, dude. That's that's yeah. trying to keep people on your streaming service with something fresh. Right. And know? it keeps the and I know it keeps the horror, you know, genre from being overloaded come the fall. But mm-hmm. for me, I don't really want to watch zombies in May. I want to watch zombies in the fall. That's it's spooky kind of season. Day. Are you a spooky season person? Oh, where it's yeah, like it's spooky. August. It's August. Yeah. So I start. Oh, going. yeah, yeah, yeah. The first once the, sp- once the pumpkin spice is available at Starbucks, that's when I get. Spooky oh, it's on. Right? It is on. I will be there. I'm making pumpkin spice everything in my kitchen when I have time. Uh, as soon as that first leaf hits the ground. Gross. You, and you can just hear and you can just you'll feel the temperature drop like five degrees in Cincinnati. Oh, come on. Oh, it's gross. Beautiful. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. Let's get into something. Uh, somebody who wants to have a lot of fan supporters. She has a ton of people following her on social media, and uh, she is also somebody who's been very divisive, uh, and that is Eva Marie. The yeah. evolution is coming to WWE. She was featured in two different vignettes, once again on Monday Night Raw, that look like they've been produced uh, fairly well. A lot of time has been spent on just filming her modeling. Uh, yeah, so, and- the, the interesting thing about this, though, is Kevin. Do, let me ask you this: Does she sound like a heel in these promos? Other people think she's supposed to be a baby face. Yeah, she's coming off as sounding like a very inspirational go getter. I can help you out. Just be like me. Like uh, here, I could be your hero type baby face. Now, maybe it's supposed to be one of those things where. She's saying it, you know, like I'm better than you kind of a thing. And it's going to come off as a heel, but these promos don't come off very heel. And we've seen reports that they want to introduce her as a baby face. And me, I'm sitting here going, Oh boy, that's a mistake. That is we're bringing Dave Batista back for WrestleMania 30 as a baby face. Bad mistake. Cause it's like, it's not going to work because unlike Batista who were, we were genuinely happy to see initially. And also the reasoning in bringing Batista back at the time as a hero made sense. He was going to be in a huge movie. He was going to be in a superhero movie. This made complete sense. Right. But he wasn't as big of us as a superstar as he was in the Hollywood world. That was pre guardians of the galaxy. He was coming back before guardians got released. He left to go do media for guardians of the galaxy. And then all of a sudden he showcases himself as Drax, the destroyer and everybody freaking loves him. Now, if Mm -hmm. they did that after guardians came out, yeah, he could have pulled off that baby face. No problem. Nobody's cheering Eva Marie when she comes back. Nobody whatsoever. She is. I think there's some, there's an easy, there's an easy switch. I don't even think you need to change anything about this, like character and the dialogue and her being like the inspirational quotes, Instagram person. I think you can turn that into a heel with just a simple little pivot, a simple little pivot. I, I, I completely agree. And I'm hoping that's the direction they go. Because again, I don't think anybody's gonna gonna cheer Eva because as when I talked to Bailey a couple of weeks ago, as she explained, she said that Eva Marie was the most fun she ever had in a wrestling ring. She said she loved having these matches with Eva Marie, and I asked her why, and she explained it beautifully. Um, you know, it was just that she was she's honestly one of the most hated, you know, wrestlers that we've had when she very polarizing, yes. Yeah, yeah. So it for me it was so awesome because the fans were still so on my side. Um, I remember doing a promo at NXT one time and she, we were literally talking back and forth and she couldn't get a word in because they, every time she put the mic up, they were booing so loud. Like we couldn't hear each other face to face. I was trying to talk and I could not hear her. She couldn't hear me. Um, until we saw the camera guys, like just talk because we have, (laughs) obviously we have a mic where TV is going to hear us, but, um, and then we've wrestled on so many live events 
for NXT that were non-televised, and it was literally the same thing. She can go and do anything. She can walk, just put her foot in the ring, and they were eating her up. It was just the most fun. Like, it's, those are those things where you don't really have to do much. You don't have to put on this big five-star match because the crowd reaction is what it's all about, and it was just so simple and so fun. And that's exactly why she has to be a heel because that's mm -hmm. where she's valuable. That's where she makes money because if somebody hates somebody so damn much, it doesn't matter who they're in the ring with. They're over because they want to see her kick the ever living. You know what out of Eva Marie, the second they announced that she came back, Kevin, we just talked about trolls on the internet bitching. Oh my goodness. That was almost nearly as bad as the zombie, uh, crap that we saw this week absolutely man and and uh you know if some people say if you're hated then you're doing something right right uh yeah. and i think there's some, there's some no degree heat. to that if there's no heat there's no match there's no money people if it doesn't matter what kind of a reaction you get as long as you get a reaction and there is no doubt about it that eva marie pulls a reaction if they I'm hoping they don't make her a baby face because she's not going to get the kind of reaction that they want. That's that's all I'm saying. And right now her promos are also this day age, you put her out there as a baby face. Maybe she gets a better reaction because people are like, well, they're telling me I'm going to be like this. And I'm going to say no. Sure and do. it's just like a double swerve, like a double work, you know? Yeah, they, uh, I'm okay with that too. If it, if it compounds what she's trying to do and adds to it, I'll, I'm completely get that. Uh, someone who's been very busy and has changed the way we consume wrestling media. I would, I would call him one of the most influential people in the wrestling business outside of WWE, outside of all Elite wrestling, you're talking about Conrad Thompson. Uh, this man truly has innovated the way we consume wrestling media. Obviously podcasting has been a big thing, but he took it to a whole new level, a whole new level. I've been able to talk to him. I know you've been able to, to ch chat with him as well. Uh, and we're going to chat him up now in this exclusive interview. Uh, we will cover the new project he's doing with Jeff Jarrett. Uh, you do get a look at his belt collection, which is pretty cool in this interview. And he has he has a very formidable uh, championship belt collection. And we do get uh, his take on where wrestling is currently and 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 how his podcast plan to it. Uh, this an exclusive from Sports Kita Wrestling. Well, in full transparency, I hated Jeff Jarrett. You know, as a <laughs> wrestling fan, I was annoyed <laughs> by his promos, his his entrances, his matches. I even referred to him as the human fast forward button because oh, if boy. there was a chance to just skip it, I would rather. Hey everybody, it is Sports Key to Wrestling. I am Kev Kell. More importantly, if you don't know that face, you definitely know that voice. That is Conrad Thompson, the pod father of adfreeshows.com something to wrestle with bruce pritchard 83 weeks with eric bischoff what happened when with tony shivani kurt angle show and now we're gonna add yet another one another reason why you may be upsetting people in your personal life conrad thompson is you launch a new show with jeff jarrett called my world conrad how are you doing I'm great, man. But you did miss Arn and grilling Jr. I, 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 I was I was gonna say there's probably two or three that I'm missing that I didn't even get it in there. You know, and seven look, days look at me, a week, baby. You know? Monday through Sunday. Here we go. <laughs> Monday through Sunday. Um, how do you, how do you balance all this? Because this is so much content to put out at one time, and also content with talent that has their own lives, their own schedules. You have people in opposing wrestling companies. Is there a conflict in doing it? it it's a lot to do. There is a lot to do, but no, we've got a great support system. You know, we've got two researchers. We've got a graphics guy. We've got a video guy. We've got two social media guys. Uh, you know, we've got a, a really good crew who do everything from YouTube to merch and an attorney. And so we've got a real full-time crew now. Uh, and that support system means that I don't have to do everything. That uh, helps, so right? I, yeah. I load up a little bit every uh, Saturday morning and every Sunday morning. So usually from about seven to one on both days i'm just checked out so my wife knows uh you have conrad from one on but after that but before that he's busy uh, and then a couple <laughs> of days during the week i'll have to do a few things like like you and i are doing here but by and large i can just go be conrad the mortgage guy monday through friday which is good that, that's crazy it's just i i i'm it's in a, 
it's an inspiring workload that you've taken on this new show you're doing with Jeff Jarrett. This isn't somebody I apparently was uh, on board for an idea. Obviously he'd be on board for interviews and different things like that. I've, I've been able to interview Jeff and he's pretty transparent, but how long did it take to get Jeff on board with this? Or was it easier when he saw the success you had with all the other rest luminaries you've worked with? Well, in full transparency, I hated Jeff Jarrett. You know, as a wrestling fan, I was annoyed by his promos, his, his entrances, his matches. I even referred to him as the human fast forward button because oh, if boy. there was a chance to just skip it, I would rather. And then, you know, Bruce started singing that stu that stupid song on something to wrestle. And so I thought, Hey, how cool would it be since Jeff's going to be down in Orlando for our first live show? Why don't you try to call and see if you can get Jeff to come sing the song? And so Bruce mm -hmm. got him to agree. And I got to hang out with him in the green room before the show. And I thought, man, I like this guy. And so I realized, wait a minute, he was a heel on TV. I was supposed to hate him. So he did his <laughs> job. And so he fooled me. And, and so anyway, we got, we had a chance to get to know each other a little bit there. And then fast forward, we did uh, Starcast together. He was the guy who put me in touch with fight. So fans all over the world could, could watch Starcast from home and that was a really fun journey. And, uh, the entire time we're doing that, you know, we're talking pretty regularly. I'm pestering him. Hey man, we should do a podcast because I got to step out of, I don't want to talk about guitar shots and figure fours and Fargo struts. I want to talk about growing up and there being, you know, vignettes shot in your basement where you live because your dad's a promoter. And I want to talk about Memphis and I want to talk about Dallas and I want to talk about walking out on Vince the first time. And I want to talk about the hold up, and I want to talk about Russo and Hogan and bash at the beach. And I want to talk about getting fired on TV and then the whole TNA thing, you know, the first TNA show happened, I don't know, three miles from my house. So I was there and I, I was fascinated with the story of this upstart wrestling company. And I read his dad's book the day it came out and I was just fascinated with, with his story and I kept peppering him and the timing wasn't right. You know, he did the global force thing and then he did the impact thing and then he did the WWE thing. And now there was an opportunity where all of a sudden, I guess with COVID and, and he had a chance to watch the last dance with Michael Jordan. And that was what got him thinking, Hey, there, there really could be good content here. And I think he thought, well, people want to hear Bruce's stories because he does impressions and he was Vince's right hand man. And mm -hmm. people want to hear Eric's stories because he created the NWO and Goldberg happened on his watch and Nitro and all that. And in his head, they don't want to hear my stories. But he saw the way Jordan responded and and was just, I don't know, he owned the screen during the last dance. And because Jeff's such a big basketball fan, he thought, man, this is it. We got to do it. So we started talking more and more. And it didn't hurt that I knew that. Jeff still had some old wrestling belts and you see behind me, I happen to collect that. <laughs> so I would pepper Jeff often about belts, but really I was trying to get him to do a podcast and eventually <laughs> we did a deal for a belt. And what do you know? We did a deal for a podcast at the same there time. There you go. There you go. go. You may, may, you would have got something out of it, out of the conversation either way. Like, yeah, uh, you brought up Starcast, an incredible series of events you've launched. Obviously the interest is growing for live events to come back. Uh, WWE is reportedly making moves to somehow set that up again to get themselves back the road. Obviously, WrestleMania was kind of their first foray back into it. And executives say it will happen when we do it. It's the right time. AEW has expressed that, yes, at some point in 2021, we're going to be back on the road. So then the conversation becomes, well, when are we going to get another star cast? Are we going to get another star cast? But I know you've expressed the arduous journey of putting on an event at this scale. I attended the first one and the second one in Chicago. It is something else. It is, it is worth the money. It is worth the trip out, uh, but it is definitely a, a lot of work. Am I wrong? No, you're exactly right. It is a lot of work. And right now, while everyone would still have to be socially distanced to be comfortable, it's a lot of work for a lot less money. So I don't know that it's as viable right now this year. I would rule out a star cast under any circumstance this year, but I do have a hope that we would be able to do at least one more. Mm -hmm. uh, I do know that AEW is doing their own sort of fan fest at double or nothing down in uh, Daly's place in Jacksonville on Saturday. So that'll be fun. Uh, but it, it won't be star cast and. I'm not anti doing it. I just don't feel like we have enough information or the people are all the way comfortable yet. So mm. I'm not in a rush to do it, but when we do it, I have already been in loose conversation with people even back before COVID of, 
where they said, Hey, I, I know I didn't do Starcast before, but I'd really like to do the next one. So I've got some soft commitments from some big names in the industry who would really like to just do something different and do something special. And I think by the time we bring it back around, people are going to be excited. Absolutely. I, like I said, when I attended, they were absolutely fantastic. And there were some events at it that caught me off guard. The roast of Bruce Pritchard is probably one of the funniest things I've ever seen live. And I've been doing comedy for 10, 11 years. Uh, please do more of those. Uh, I, I know you have, you have some great people contributing as well to all these different events. Well worth it if it happens again. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now you have an intimate knowledge of the wrestling industry right now. It is in a very different place than it was when you started uh, getting more involved with it on the podcast side of things. AEW has really opened up the market. We heard just a few days ago about Daniel Bryan's contract expiring. Some people think he'll stay with WWE. Some people think he won't. It is a different time for the talent in this company and probably even everyone else in this in the industry at that level of trying to get on a televised wrestling company. What's your take on it? And, you know, for lack of a phrase, chat me up on it. What is the state of wrestling right now? Because it is completely different than when you got this involved with it a few years ago. Well, I mean, I think impacts on the right track. I mean, if you see the, uh, the pay-per-view buy numbers, it seems like, you know, they're doing as good as they have in several years. So that's mm -hmm. great. Yeah. And I'm anxious to see new Japan, you know, start running on a wider scale and things get more back to normal. It felt like they had a ton of momentum and of course, COVID hurt some of that, like everybody. And yeah, I mean, there's even opportunities for independent shows. You know, I think game changer wrestling uh, is doing a show in Wyoming, like I wouldn't have ever called that, but good for them. Uh, so yeah, th there's a big opportunity right now for a lot of guys. And, uh, I think that while it sucks to see people lose their jobs, that creates a, a new lease on life for a lot of those talents who are, are fresh off WWE programming. And it'll be interesting to see over the next few months, how that shakes out. I'm not going to say it feels like the Monday night war again, but I am no. going to say that those folks have an opportunity to really hit the reset button. And I've always felt like, you know, you, you sort of have to make a deal with the devil, not the right phrase there, but when you go to work with WWE, you sacrifice a little bit of your creative freedom mm -hmm. and, and hopefully you do that for a, a gargantuan sum of money. But I think eventually you get, you know, you finally quote unquote, make it and, and you, and you get there financially and you're secure and you're like, well, this is, you know, gosh, I wish I could still do this or that. And now those folks have that opportunity to do that. And so a lot of those guys are probably having more fun and, and doing just fine on their own. You know, I'm talking about guys like Brian Myers and Matt Cardona. I mean, those guys, everything they touch turns to gold because they're hard workers. They love wrestling. They love the fans and the fans know that. And they didn't, they weren't allowed to have that sort of relationship with fans when they were with WWE, but they can now. So even though it feels like on the one hand, yeah, but all these people just got let go. Well, man, they're going to go do great stuff because to your point, it is a different landscape. Now mm -hmm. there are more opportunities. And I know that a lot of people online say, oh, well, wrestling's not as good as it's ever been because less people than ever are watching. Okay. That may be true, but they're invested more. And yeah. what I mean is when I first started advertising my mortgage company, I advertised on a, on a big, like, I guess we'll call it like a hot FM. So they're playing a lot of like current pop stuff and it was the biggest station in the market, but it was very expensive and it didn't work for me. I didn't get a return, but then I was called on by a T tiny heritage sports talk AM station. And it was very affordable, but in my head, I'm thinking how many people are even listening to that? I did my first commercial and my phone lines lit up. And so I learned right then it's not about how many people are seeing your product or hearing your product. What really matters is how many people are engaged in listening or learning about your product. And, you know, if you're just casually watching, but you're not buying anything, you know, there is some value there, but when you're actually invested and you're supporting it with your wallet, uh, now you've got something. So the, these companies that are selling, uh, you know, streaming services or merch opportunities or what, whatever the case may be, if you're voting with your wallet, that's how you really support your favorite wrestling company now more than ever, especially with talents and the, and the whole split that like pro wrestling tees does with, uh, with talent all over the country, it's revolutionized the way that whole thing happens. I mean, they've even got a, a stand up comedy arm now, and they're going to continue to grow that because it's just a great business model. And it is a great time to be a wrestling fan, but it's also a great time to be in the business of professional wrestling. And it's opened things up and then you see, you know, WWE was able to benefit and sign these billion dollar deals with new TV yeah. companies and 
it's good for the big ones. It's good for the little ones. It's good for everybody in between. Uh, and you enter it knowing all these different people in a, in a slightly more uh, personal way, in a slightly more professional way. You get these stories from people. What's the craziest story you've ever gotten out of it? anyone on your podcast? You're like, I thought we were going to get this, but we got something completely different. And you've gotten some wild ones from Bruce. You've gotten some crazy ones from Jim Ross. Arn Anderson has is, is probably opened up more to you than maybe many other people he has uh, in the media world. But what are some of those stories you heard were like, I thought we were going to get this and it went a completely different way. Well, man, that's happened a lot. I mean, one of the biggest ones was, um, well, let me give you a Bruce example. When they lost power at In Your House Beware of Dog, I just assumed Vince McMahon would have a classic meltdown like we've all heard about. I mean, mm-hmm. we've heard this guy gets mad at sneezes. So <laughs> in my head, when, when the whole show was really screwed, his pay-per-view and everything is just circling the drain immediately. And there's nothing he can do about it. He didn't flip out. He was calm. And, and that just was like, wait a minute, what? How do you reconcile this over-the-top behavior? But then in this case, no big deal. And then, you know, with Eric Bischoff, we, we did, I don't know, probably 40 pages of notes once about the whole Bret Hart saga in WCW. And we specifically talked about the contract offer that Eric made to Bret in 1996, where he famously made his decision on raw in October. And Eric says, Nope, never happened. Never sent that contract. But so many other people from Dave Meltzer to great friend of the show, TJ Wilson said, Oh yeah, it happened. And Bischoff doubled down and said, show me the contract and I'll eat it live on the air and, and nobody's produced it. And so it's like my whole, my whole story, the narrative I had in mind for all the research was about that contract. And now it didn't happen. Uh, but Jeff Jarrett's got something coming up on episode two, where we talk about when Vince fired him live on TV on maybe the most famous raw nitro ever on March 26, 2001. And his reaction to that. I was not prepared for, we just recorded it yesterday and I'll never forget when he said what he said, I thought that can't be real. And we continued to talk and no, he really believed something totally different. So it's happened a few times, but, uh, that's what makes this so fun is these guys have not told those stories before everybody else tells their story. And now it's time to hear it sort of straight from the horse's mouth, as they like to say. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. So much going on, as I even mentioned. I couldn't even remember all the shows you're doing every single week, Conrad. Uh, obviously, adfreeshows.com is where you can go and get them first before they're available on public podcast apps like the Westwood One app, as well as Apple and anywhere else you get your podcast. So, you- Conrad Thompson, so nice, so wonderful. So what, what, what a gem of a guy there. If you uh, came over to our show because you check out everything he does, thank you. Subscribe if you haven't done it already. That's it's available great. on Spotify, Google Podcasts, and we'll get Apple one of these days. Sooner Tim or later. Apple, yeah. Tim Apple Take will respond fist. to our emails, and he'll put us on their podcast machine. Uh, thank you guys so much for doing Also, give us a five-star review. If you listen to us now for nearly you know an hour plus, just go ahead. Five-star review. It helps us climb up the old... Uh, media ladder uh we have a lot more available of of new video content every single day on youtube on facebook go ahead and check it all out so we got uh we got ourselves a new north american champion in wwe nxt bronson reed a thrilling steel cage match the the kiwi the big kiwi takes the title off johnny wrestling johnny gargano leader of the way johnny has fully embraced his own uh, i know better than you guru mentality but it didn't mean anything when you're trapped in a big cage with one of the most dynamic athletic big men in the business splashed into steel in the door. I thought that was such a creative little finish there. And he is the new, new North American champion, even though he's from, from New Zealand. Oh, (laughs) why not? We've had, you know, how many, Seamus is the United States champion. He's American. What does it matter? We're melting. We're melting the European title back in the day. I mean, it doesn't (laughs) matter doesn't matter rusev won the united states championship and you know basically played that ivan drago character right um (laughs) but yeah no i i i'm so happy for for bronson reed this is a guy who i've been high on for uh, a while now happy to see him get that victory you could see it in his face man like when he when he knew it was over and the three count was coming down you could you could see it in his face like oh man my my 14 year run finally here's this big moment Here's 14 the years in the business too. That's a long time. 
big moment for the big guy on a big stage main event. You know, it was, it was, it was a fantastic match. Very, very creative finish. As you alluded to, we all knew Johnny Gargano was going to eat a big splash at some point in this match. He got a couple of them. Uh, and yeah, I think the right guy went over in this instance, uh, longest title reign by far for Mr. Johnny Gargano. He had a really, really nice title reign. I talked to him, uh, shortly after he won that belt said he wanted a really long, um, a, a really long championship run. That's something that he hasn't had in NXT. Usually he gets it and he drops it, uh, almost immediately, uh, which has allowed him to be now a three time North American champion. He got a pretty good run this time. Uh, it's about 170 days or so, 150, 170 days. Uh, I could look that up real quick, but I know it's the second longest run ever uh, for that uh, NXT uh, North American Championship. So uh, good for him on a, on a good run. They finally gave him uh, some some title defenses, and, but I think this was time. I think it's time to see what uh, what Bronson Reed can do with the championship, and I'm, I'm really excited for him, and I'm excited to talk to him next week. Because oh. I, got, I got that confirmed this week uh, that I'll be talking to the big man on Monday. So make sure to uh, check out the Sports Keto Wrestling YouTube channel uh, this coming Tuesday uh, when my conversation with the new colossal NXT North American champion will we drop. drop that audio on the podcast then too. So then we, we're, we're going to we're, we get some Bron Bron on the show. We're, we're, we'll double dip with uh, we'll double dip. We'll double dip our chip. All right. Yeah. So uh, good on him. Big, big man, big week for big man. We have that yes. great triple threat from WWE. We have Bronson Reed winning the, winning the title on, on Tuesday. Good week for big guys in WWE. Good week for big guys here. Let's talk about SmackDown this week. Yes. Uh, SmackDown has a fatal four way for the intercontinental title, uh, title, a match where people said, How come they're not putting this on the pay per view? But then you saw the pay per view and it was what, under three hours, just about three oh, hours. I was like, perfect. Yeah, perfect time perfect for a pay per view. Time. No reason not to save these big matches for television. WWE did one uh, with NXT this week. They did a cage match for the title on television this week. I like this idea, especially on SmackDown. You know, they did that great uh, Daniel Bryan send-off match with him and Roman Reigns. These big matches, these big moments on SmackDown, I'm feeling this. Yeah, it makes SmackDown feel special it makes it feel big it's gonna, this is what gets you to tune in if you think there's a, a, a big fight feel and having uh, you know women's tag team title changes having uh north american title changes on television you know what that makes you think oh okay we might actually see a title change at any time any any place you know for i think for a while they kind of got in a rut there where they would have these matches but you knew some kind of shenanigans was going to go down like there was going to be some shenanigans kind of yeah, shenanigans. There was going to be some disqualifications. There were going to be some outside interference. Reginald was going to do some stupid bullshit. Uh, you knew that's just what they were going to do, uh, whether it be SmackDown or Raw. But lately, they're they're advertising these matches ahead of time. They're making them feel big. That Roman Reigns Daniel Bryan match felt huge. It felt gargantuan. All right, one and of it, the best matches really I've seen in wrestling this entire year. I would yeah. say better than it was better than the triple threat that Roman Edge and Daniel Bryan had at WrestleMania. I thought all of it was great, but yeah, you, you could make that argument for sure. So that's why they're putting this on SmackDown. They want another big fight feel, and we have uh, four incredible talents heading for the Intercontinental Championship right now. I could see any one of these guys winning. You got KO, you got Sami Zayn, you got Apollo Crews, and you got Big E. Kev, who do you think is walking away as the Intercontinental Champion? Uh, I, it's got to be too soon to take it off Apollo. He just won this belt at WrestleMania, right? They don't want to hot shot this belt and have it run around, though I see that could be interesting. You know, they've had big uh timely periods where they where they where they kind of hot potato a belt for a little bit sure. uh and they did that they did that at different periods of the career some people don't like that but certainly i don't think anyone would be super upset if any of these other challengers got that title i would be pretty okay if anybody won this matchup to be honest with you because even if apollo cruz does retain you still have a ton of options on the table for the other three guys in that match. The mm -hmm. one thing that I don't want to see is Big E take the pinfall. That is the one thing I don't want to see because when you look at the landscape of the rest of SmackDown, him, to me, clearly is your next challenger for Roman Reigns. Mm. That's the only thing why it made sense to take that title off of him. And by the way, I mean next challenger as in after Money in the Bank heading towards SummerSlam because you got to build him up a little bit. True. So you got to build I, him I, up a you know, you, uh, Dark Horse? Kevin Owens. As I the, think Kevin Owens, Kevin Owens was the guy who's locked to Roman Reigns' hip for a long, long time, really helping people get an idea of that head of the table character. Yeah. Had some great stuff with him. Then they got him away from the world title scene. I say make him the number two belt guy. 
Get him in there with Apollo. Get him in there with Sammy. Let uh, let Big E run on his own towards the world title scene. I think that could be something here. I don't mind taking the belt off Apollo if it means Apollo can stay around that title for some time. I, I, sure, I, I, and I wouldn't there. be mad. I wouldn't be mad at all if Apollo keeps it because I think it would make a lot of sense to move Cesaro into that Intercontinental Championship picture. Oh, I, I say yeah. keep Cesaro chasing Reigns, man. Keep him chasing that, Reigns. Put the money in the bank on Cesaro. That, I mean, yes, Cesaro had a fantastic match with Roman Reigns. It was great. He lost clean as a whistle, though. He, he did. lost clean as a whistle. No interference. No interference. There's nothing to build off of there. There's no more meat on that bone. He had his opportunity. He lost it. Other than doing the stereotypical lazy WWE thing of saying, I want one more shot at it. You know, basically the Rocky two. I want another shot at it or in reverse anyway, because Rocky didn't want the rematch. But um, <laughs> you Listen, get what I'm saying. Adrian, if you want me to get out of this, if you want me to give up the rematch, we can find another way. <laughs> Right. Yeah, so and then want, she just goes to him and says, actually, Rocky, Rocky, one thing, win. But it's, <laughs> yeah, I love it. It's my favorite Unless they scene actually the pull the Rocky two, where somebody gets in Roman Reigns' ear and says, he almost, he had you. Like, he had you. He could beat you. And Roman's like, F that. I'm going to kick his ass. I'm going to make it definitive. And then Cesaro wins narrowly. Unless they pull the Rocky two, it doesn't make any sense to put Cesaro right back into the title picture. I mean, if they and wanted to keep it going, if they just if they could get under Roman skin by people just simply saying that Cesaro made it made it interesting, you know? And, and that could just be you didn't acknowledge me the proper way, you know. I'm okay with that. So, Reigns is on a roll. In terms of just like character depth, he's on a roll right now in terms sure. of what he's doing. I wonder what they're going to do with him at Hell in a Cell. That could be interesting. And uh will Jimmy and Jay, the cousins is 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 almost brothers at this point will they play a role will they put them in the hell in a cell match uh it'll be interesting uh, we're gonna be I dropping a video by the way of, of five potential hell in a cell matches that uh that wwe can make in the next few weeks uh, one match i'm excited for and uh, excited to see how they follow up for love this i thought another another thing another thing that happened right uh before this zombie uh, fracas at the wwe backlash pay-per-view this past sunday was the mysterios won the smackdown tag team titles but we don't want to talk about that feel good moment, that great match. No, we want to bitch about zombies. The Mysterios won these tag team titles. I love this. This felt great. They could have held off until fans are back for this big kind of a cash in the emotion moment. But what did you think of it? Dominic and Ray, father and son tag team champs. I, I love the story. I do. And, you know, the, the match was a bit predictable. Like we kind of figured Dominic was going to come down at the end. But I love how Ray didn't want to. Predictable isn't match. bad. Predictable, predictable is not a bad. Is good. I, that's kind of a dumb thing to say, but you know, as long as it's pulled off correctly, I, and I think they did. I love that Ray didn't want to tag him into the match. Like Ray was like, "No, I'm your father. That's the more important thing right here is your health. I'm not going to tag you into this match." And then Dominic tags himself in, and he's like, "I got this." And then Dominic ends up getting the pinfall victory. I, think I love Luke, the ending when Ray I, when Ray did the power bomb to Dolph outside the ring, and he went to his son and said, "Now, now you do it. Now yeah, is when we go, win. go, go." Yeah, it was. It was that great father teaching son moment. And, you know, they were obviously uh, overcome with emotion when they won those championships. And it's a really, really cool thing to see Ray and Dominic as a tag team titles. I love that they did the uh, the homage to Eddie with the frog splash to, to win it and everything. But, man, the, I just it's such a nitpick thing, but it's like, come on. Oh, come we, on. We, Rick. we couldn't have it in front of fans like that. Like, we couldn't oh, have it in front of fans. Pick, Rick, here we go. Get we the couldn't, tweezers we couldn't out, Rick. Wait two months. Where are my tweezers? We couldn't draw are. this out another I'm, month. I'm yelling half. at my roommate to bring me my tweezers so that you could find the one hair we didn't pluck earlier in this podcast. That's come the only on, thing. Rick. Like, it would have been so much better in front of a live crowd. And you can't, you can't do that moment twice. No, you, you can't. can't you're things, right. You can't do that the, moment twice. In the grand scheme of things, twice. would it have been a big deal to wait a month and a half to do that at Money in the Bank? True. I guess it True. depends but, on what you, you want to do. Maybe they didn't even know they were doing it by then. You know what I mean? It could have been like Sunday. They didn't know if they were going to be able to do it in an arena for sure. Yeah, maybe. And also, maybe, they, hey, we want to make every pay-per-view count. We want to make sure you get True. some special things on this. That's true. And maybe you know they thought now? people were really going to hate that zombie bit. Like that would have been really like 50, 50. We'll, we'll give them the father son tag team win. Yeah, everything's that'll, right. that'll leverage it. Out. Everything, everybody will focus on the positives for sure. There were oh, yeah, sure. Absolutely. Them, uh, in that entire show. But uh, you know, it does open us up now. I think eventually, because I think dolphin and rude will get the first rematch, even though there's no automatic rematches, but after hell in a cell, I think we're heading towards the Usos and the Mysterios. And I'm really, really looking forward to that. 
But you asked earlier about possible matchups for for Roman Reigns and Hell in a Cell. I think you got to go Jimmy Uso, don't you? You got to you got to run back what you did you last Jimmy? year. You do, you do like a triple if you do the dude a triple threat. Oh <laughs> man, I'm thinking you give Jimmy the same opportunity that Jay did. You give Jimmy the one on one match for the Universal Championship inside Hell in a Cell. Line. And if he loses, he has line. to acknowledge Roman Reigns, and that's yeah. But then, isn't that just kind of a retread of last year? The last time, the well, October, it'd be a retread of just October. It, it, it's the same, but different because now you have the other defiant brother, and maybe you do something different in the end where uh, Jay does not come to uh, to to Jimmy's aid. Maybe Jay turns on Roman again. You still have a lot of options that you can go in this direction here, but I love the idea of giving Jimmy the opportunity. The same opportunity that Jay got last year that put him over. Because if you can get Jimmy over in the same way that Jay got over, all of a sudden you have a monster superstar tag team that can do some serious business, not only in the tag team division, but in the singles title runs as well. Uh, they've done some really compelling things with the Usos, Rowan Reigns, and that Hell in a Cell match, that I quit Hell in a Cell match, yeah. was special. That was one of the best dialogue performances I've ever seen in a match. Hands down. If you haven't seen it, seek it out. Seek it out. Right. What is next for Cesaro? He's no longer in the title picture. Where do you go with him? You mentioned maybe putting him in the Intercontinental title scene. I think that's the play. I think he he closes out this thing with Seth Rollins at uh, Hell in a Cell. He's in the Money in the Bank ladder match for sure. Maybe he wins it. Mm. And that, that's the way to get him back into it. I, I would put him in the in that category of guys. I would put that briefcase on uh, in a heartbeat. Uh, doesn't mean he's got to cash it in right away either. So there's some options here. I think they got he's got some unfinished business with Seth Rollins. Finish that up at Hell in a Cell and then put him in the Money in the Bank ladder match. If he wins it, great. If he doesn't, you got Apollo sitting right there. He can get right into the Intercontinental title picture. Kick-ass stuff. Thank you guys so much. You spent an hour with us. Whether you watched oh, it or you listened to it, we hope you enjoyed it, and we hope you share it. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you're watching this somewhere, go ahead and get in the comments. Let us know what you, what's going on. I'll jump into those comments and talk to you as well. If you haven't checked it out, a bunch of new content on our video channels. We're expanding the podcast channel. Give us some feedback, by the way, uh, for the podcast. Hit us up on Twitter, at SK Wrestling underscore. It's at SK Wrestling underscore. Let us know, hey, I listen to the podcast. I really like it. I like this more than the video, or I prefer this, or, hey, I just like the video. How do you watch it? What do you feel about it? Give us your feedback on it and uh, give Rick a follow. Where do they go, Rick? Uh, at Rick Uchino, R-I-C-K-U-C-C-H-I-N-O. Uh, you'll get uh, the very first uh, tidbits of when I drop uh, my news and my clips about exclusive interviews. I'm, I'm getting a lot of them recently, guys. Again, I got uh, uh, Big Bronson Reed coming up on uh, Monday, and there's going to be uh, plenty more of that. Working on a special guest for next week. Fingers crossed for this program. Uh, hopefully, we'll get that done. Uh, but uh, I don't like uh, saying too much until things are officially official. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. just keep an eye out at Rick Uchino. Again, R-I-C-K-U-C. C C H I N O. And uh, yeah, you'll have the, the first for anything that I'm doing. That's going to drop on there. Uh, you can follow me on the Twitter machine at Kev Kellum. I'm on Instagram, Kev Kellum six. I had to go with six for that <laughs> number, uh, but I'm uh, pretty busy. I'm very, very busy. I'm doing two Monday through Friday radio shows. Plus the live streams with Sports Kita, plus the podcast. I'm a busy, busy man. So what busy you're saying man. is you're rolling in the coin right now, is what you're saying. Uh, I don't know if I'm rolling in the coin. I'm, I'm not rolling in a bed. I can tell you that. <laughs> I need more. I need more rolls in a bed. I can tell you that. Uh, but I'm very busy. You can catch me out uh, Mondays through Fridays in the morning on WQLZ.com. You can stream it there. QLZ 97.7, 97.7QLZ. Great rock radio in Springfield, Illinois. Or if you're in the middays, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., you can catch me on The X. You can stream me at TheXRockford.com. Uh, we do an hour of uh, 90s rock. I get to tell jokes about uh, you know when you when you were kicking in Nintendo 64 because it didn't work. And now here's Soundgarden. Uh, <laughs> I get to do fun <laughs> stuff like that. So definitely give it a check out. We're available on the TuneIn app as well or the Odyssey app if you want to stream those. And uh, check out all the things we're doing. We're very, very busy. I'm going to be at Zany's Comedy Club, by the way, on June 30th. So I'm, I'm filming. My dates are filling out. Uh, I, I probably have an angry girlfriend <laughs> as more of these dates fill out. You might not uh, have a girlfriend I, I, Yeah, she's still my girlfriend, right? <laughs> she's like, get angry. I don't know. You might want to pick up that phone and call her back. <laughs> she's in Ohio at the moment. Did you get oh, my girl? You, I, no. All right. That's let me mean. know. Let me know. If she's staying there, you got to let me know. <laughs> 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 For the people.
people listening to the podcast. Rick goes, "Yeah, hey, let me let me open up the, the open up the door and yell down the hallway and tell her that you're you're here." Uh, <laughs> all right, thank you guys so much. Uh, hopefully, you're having a laugh while we're doing the show. That's what we're shooting for. This yeah, is, we we want this it's wrestling. Fun. Don't take it that seriously, folks. Exactly. Even if it's zombies, don't take it that seriously. Seriously, as always, when watching wrestling, whether or not you're rolled up in the inside cradle with sports Kita or you're bitching about zombies on the Internet, do the most important thing, which is enjoy wrestling.